Hey friends, welcome to Gemma Darling Daily. Gemma Darling Daily. <laughs> Gemma Darling Not So Daily. Um, I'm your host, Danielle, and this is season five, episode two. Um, I have literally no notes, so I'm just winging it because I did my hair and my makeup today, and whenever I do that, I say, let's podcast. <laughs> um, and you know, whenever I do my hair and makeup and I come downstairs, Franny looks at me and says, oh, mommy, you smell so good. <laughs> and I'm like, um, is she trying to tell me something? Uh, yeah, I know that this pandemic is causing us all not to maybe shower as much as we used to, but, um, I like to think that I don't smell bad. I know that, um, uh, as I discussed late last year, I'm not wearing deodorant as much because that shit is bad for you. And where am I going? And the people I'm home with, they need to love me. They have to love me. I feed them. So, you know, just taking a little leeway there. Anyway, I hope um, this podcast is finding you all well. We are on the cusp of spring, and I think we can all feel it because, you know, uh, the pandemic is just worse in the winter. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm someone who really does like to stay home, but, uh, you know, when you can't go even to the supermarket or out to dinner once in a while or to the movies, it's just, it's kind of, you know, taking its toll mentally. And um, so I think it's gonna be really, really nice for all of us to kind of break out this summer and, you know, stretch our arms, put our little blow up pools in the backyard, you know, pour ourselves a Bacardi and, <laughs> and pretend we're in the Bahamas. But um, please stay vigilant. Um, I know that we're all starting to get vaccinated. Um, I have a lot of friends that have been vaccinated. My parents have been vaccinated. So fingers crossed this starts to return us to normal. But for those that don't watch the 24-hour news cycle like I do, um, just be forewarned that these, these vaccines keep you, they don't keep you from getting sick, they keep you from getting super sick where you have to go to the hospital and they are preventing death. So those are two wonderful things, but you can still get sick and you can still pass it to someone else. And so while we're not all vaccinated, we do still have to wear masks, even though there are asshole governors in a lot of states who are canceling masks because they're total assholes. And I couldn't say assholes more. There you go. Um, I did just get off a of Zoom with some of my favorite ladies, Creative Sissy, you know, Gigi made it, um, Christina from Chelsea Yarns, um, Sophie, who was Delfina, I believe Delfina 13, um, and, and there were a lot of people on this Zoom. They just randomly advertised that they were going to be talking about their planners, and, you know, we all watched them with the stickers and the washi tape and this and that, and I'm quite in awe. I wish I had time to do that. Um, I myself, well, let me, before I get into that, let's just say there were like about a hundred and I would say 15 to 125 people on this Zoom call talking about planners and it was fantastic. And, um, you know, it's nice that we are all a community of knitters, but we also share so much more. And so, yes, I have been seeing that all of you are these planners. I myself cannot bring stickers into this house. Um, stickers end up everywhere but I do have sticker envy watching everyone else with their planners. So I really, really enjoyed this Zoom. Um, just listening to s people talk about something else that they're passionate about. And what I really liked about it is I I've always been a, a planner person, not like this, not to this extent. This is more, I would say it's an art, you know, or a meditation that everyone does every day where they get their life in order. They see what they've done. You know, for me, I have... Rifle Paper Company planners, plain ones. Um, I like I like looking at the month at a glance. I like these, the month at a glance. I like writing down people's birthdays, even though I still forget them. And then I <laughs> like writing down, um, you know, doctor's appointments and this and that. But I, I really like um, these pages where it's the week at a glance. And then here I have a to-do list and notes. And usually what I do is in the notes section, I'll write down like, you know, here, what I watched that week. Cause I, for some reason, really like keeping track of what I watched. And then in this section here, I write what I have to do. And um, if I don't do it that week, 
it just gets put onto my list for next week. So I just keep carrying it over. Um, on this section, I'll put what the kids are eating for dinner, what I'm eating for dinner. And I plan out the week as best possible based on, you know, what we got for groceries that week. And then I don't have to sit there every day when the kids are going, what's for dinner? I just go, okay, well, we're going to look at the planner. Tonight you're having, you know, avocado toast and this and that. And I know that day when I have to start dinner at six or when I have to start dinner at three because I'm making bread. So, you know, things like that. Um, I've been making baguettes and I love them. And so sometimes, you know, we're having soup night, which is Thursday night is like my night off. We canned soups. <laughs> you know, the kids eat lentil soup, which is really good for them, or the organic tomato soups with like a piece of like fresh bread. And you know what? That's fine because they have nutrient um, rich meals for breakfast and lunch. And then for dinner, they can have something comforting and hopefully the warm soup makes them tired. So that is what I do. Um, you know, and I'll plan it. You know, we know that pizza night's Friday night, Saturday night's burger night, Sunday night is pasta night, but am I making pasta or are we just, you know, it just helps me. So that's what I do with my planners. Um, I remember in high school, I got accepted to this program where um, me and this one other girl from my school, we got to go to Rutgers for a weekend and learn about careers. It was like a career institute, which is ironic to me since I'm a housewife. But um, the girl I was with said to me once, she's like, you're always making lists. And I said, yeah, I am. I'm always making lists. And I've always been doing that because I'm a very anxiety ridden person. And making lists is like my meditation. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm accomplishing things when I check stuff off. And one of the ladies on this Zoom said, I think it was Julie Aslin actually said, like, when you accomplish something during the day that you did not put on your list initially, do you add it to your list just so you can check it off? And I do. I absolutely do. That little check mark, I live for them. Absolutely. So maybe that's my form of stickers. Um, but I mean, I use my planner is like my hub of what's going on. Doctor's appointments, when the girls have been vaccinated, all that stuff. I also keep lists of things. You know, do you ever have stuff in your head and you're like, I'm not going to remember this. I'm not going to remember this. Instead of putting it in the pages of the year, I put it in the notes in the back. So I have pages like lists of like dinners that my husband and I like. I have dinners that the girls will eat. Um, you know, and I have like different things I want to try. Like here's a bunch of pastas, here are sides. And it's almost like, um, do you ever have like a set of flashcards and you can put them all together to make a sentence or something? This is kind of like I can put these things together to make a meal. I can pick one entree, I can pick a side, I can pick a this. And so instead of thinking and forgetting about things that we've eaten, that I've made and we've eaten that we've liked, I put it on my list. And you know, dinner is not so easy for me because of my husband's allergy. And so, you know, whereas people make meatloaf or, you know, regular soups or chicken soup or, you know, a lot of things like, you know, I would love to spatchcock a chicken and, and shove some garlic up its ass and, you know, make a roast chicken. I can't do that because of the garlic and the onions that are involved in it. So the meals that I put together, like when I get one together, that's good it has to go somewhere to be remembered. And that's what I use my planner for. So I guess that's because I'm a stay at home mom. This is the kind of stuff that my life centers around. And I guess if, when I was in the workforce, I, would, I was a customer service representative for a very, very high end watch company. I would get yelled at all day long. So my respite in between calls was marking up my planner. I would keep track of my credit cards because I, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money and I was living in New York City. I wasn't a knitter then. I mean, I knew how to knit, but I didn't fall down the knitting home. Though there was a knitting store on 2nd Avenue on 23rd Street. It was called Knit New York. And I remember I would go in there with like yarn and needles and everyone would be knitting and knitting and knitting. And I had like no idea what I was doing but it was a cafe. So I would order something to drink and just sit there with my yarn. I didn't know how to knit really. Um, I didn't really know how to cast on and do all that stuff. And I don't know why I went there. I think it was just the knitting was pulling at me. It was pulling at me. It wanted me. But um, I wish it was still there. It was really cute. Yeah. But I remember seeing a skein of yarn 
I think back then it was like 20 something dollars and I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I have $50 for lunch for a week. Like I had $40 after paying all my bills. I had $40 for nightlife in New York City for a month or no, no, for two weeks because I got paid every two weeks. And I remember I would go out like on a Friday night and I'd go, oh, I spent $40 tonight. And they'd be like, oh, that was great. That's not a lot of money. And I'm like, that's all I have. Like, that's all I have. I was definitely living behind, beyond my means, but I didn't spend beyond my means. Like, so that was good. That's gone out the window. I mean, like, hello, knitting. So, I mean, but like, this stuff is so beautiful. All right, I have one more thing to show you, okay? So I was looking at, I don't know if you guys follow Machete Shop, Brittany Petco. I really love her, and not just her yarn, but I love, she's a very spiritual person, and I don't mean that in, like, a religious sense. I mean, like, she's very in tune to, like, nature, and she has a farm, and I just really love that about her. Um, and I saw that she had bought this planner, and... Not that I believe in astrology as a science. Obviously, it's not the 1500s anymore. I'm not like some alchemist. But I I do believe that there's something in this world in terms of like, you know, some days you do feel more powerful. You know, things are coming from the earth. I do believe in gravitational pulls and like the waning and waxing of the moon and this and that. Because, you know, even a woman with her period, like you can tell if it's like a full moon, like, you know... <laughs> sometimes we vamp out. And um, so there is something to it, right? To, it's physics, I believe. And so there is something to all these forces that are surrounding us in nature. Um, I don't know much more than that. I, I'm, I'm, I haven't delved into it as a science, but I do know that like, I'm a Cancerian. Um, I was born in July and I fit the description of a Cancerian to a T. Like I've always been um, a water sign. And I've always been very, um, like a summer baby. And I like to, um, help people. I'm very maternal. I'm very sensitive. I have a, you know, a hard shell on the outside. Um, and I'm, I'm soft inside. And, you know, I've got like, you know, like my snippers, like you get, come out my family, you come out my friends, you're going to get it. So I am, that cancer crab, you know, I have the mood swings and I know this about myself, um, but I'm also a cancer moon child. So cancerians are um, very in tune with moonstone. And so I, I do pay attention to the moon. I liked this planner because it, it was very different. Um, and this is from magicofeye.com and it's a moon planner. Uh, I, I think this is so pretty, I, I really, think it's beautiful. Um, even just the front of it, it's this, um, I believe it's like a leather or a vegan leather. Uh, I bought, there was a set. So this one came, this was just a notebook and this one's in gray. Um, but this one's actually really cool. Um, you know, so every month it's got like the moons and it's got, um, you know, places to set your intentions. And, um, I think it's, it's really great. It asks you a lot of questions, you know, like what would I like more of in my life and how will I do that? Here is my spiritual, what would I like? Here is my actionable steps. And so sometimes just writing stuff down kind of takes it off your shoulders and that helps quell my anxiety. And so I like, you know, sometimes you need to sit down and think about yourself and just be mindful. And so I like this journal for that. It is a little bit of a journal. You've got your monthly goals. You've got intentions to set for the weeks of the month. You know, there are places to write things. Um, but there are also, you know, it tells you astrological transits and things like that. I just think it's cool. It, whether it's real or not, I enjoy it. So anyway, um, this is from Magic of I. Magic of I, just an I, dot com. And it was interesting. It was just different. So I thought I'd share it. All right, now you want to get into some whips? Let's do it. Um, so last, last fall, I did the knit collage cal. I, I didn't jump in. You know, sometimes they come along when I'm doing something else, but I always like to join and I always like to buy a kit. Not only to support Amy and Vanessa of Knit Collage, I love to read the patterns and I really, the yarn is just gorgeous. It is. I mean, but I let this one get away from me a little bit. So this is my, I believe it's a kaleidoscope 
um, knit, which is the one that you see with all the stripes of different yarns, but I decided to do it all in one yarn and I just kept knitting. So it's now a tunic and it goes over my tush. And I had Franny put it on the other day and she was like, this is great. It goes down to my feet. And I was like, okay, but I'm not going to frog it. I think that it'll look really cute with leggings. I just need to put some sleeves on it. And then I think I might edge it. Um, I have a lot of, let's say I can get into my, I keep my big knit collage bin like right next to me because I love to just be able to grab it. Um, but Vanessa just finished a pattern where she pull, she put the antique mauve with this yarn, um, which is their fabric yarn. I believe it's called Wildflower. And I think I may tip the edge of the neckline in it. I love that the neckline is really big on this. Um, I did choose a size that's probably, I, I knit it in a three and I think I should have knit it in either a two but I don't like things that are tight to my body. I like them bigger. So um, it does make it a little more bulky looking, but you know, whatever. It's like, it's puffy yarn. It's gonna make you look bulky. I think in the end of the day, you're gonna look adorable and you're gonna be warm. And those are two really important things. And um, so this is the wildflower yarn in Beatnik. And I think I'm just gonna like maybe do a crochet edge around the neck on it. I thought that would look maybe really cute, almost like a necklace that goes with it. And then um, I'm gonna put some sleeves on it. Now let me show you how long it is because I may not put a full sleeve on it. I don't know if I'm gonna do that puff sleeve where it's just the same width the whole way and then cinches at the wrist, which I seem to like to knit those because you don't have to keep track of rows. And um, with the kids, I mean, you do have to keep track of rows, but since this is so big, you can hold it like next to each other and see if the sleeves are the same length. Um, but you don't have to keep in, keep track of like decreases, which drives me nuts when I'm on Sleeve Island. It really does. Which is why I usually buy two sets of the same size of needles and I do it at the same time. I would knit four rows of this and then four rows of this one, and then four rows of this one, and four rows of this one. So that I'm doing the same decreases, I'm following the pattern all the way down, and when I'm done, I'm done with both of them. It's like no second sock syndrome, no second sleeve syndrome. You know, you're done with both of them. I also sometimes on my other sweaters like to, you know, you do the yoke, you do all of the short rows, then you um, get it down to here where you split for the sleeves. I sometimes like to just do a, like another inch around my waist and then do both the sleeves and then finish the body. Um, it's better for planning for yarn. Um, if you run out of yarn on the body, you can always put something cute at the bottom. Whereas with sleeves, it would be harder to plan. So finish the sleeves and then finish the body. Because then when you're done with the body, it's done. So I like that. But let me get back to this. I keep like, inter I, I like totally speak over myself. That's weird. Anyway. I kept knitting and I just kept knitting and knitting and I just didn't know what length I wanted it. Like at first I kind of thought, okay, it's gonna be a big neck. Maybe it'll like hang off my shoulder a little bit like flash dance. And then I can make it like, just go like right under my butt and I'll put a big band under it. And I was like, hmm, I still might change it to that. I'm gonna do the sleeves, but I just kept knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting. It's humongous. It's humongous. It's absolutely freaking humongous. And guess what? I love it. And at the bottom, I put these ridges because I'm going to do a crochet row onto those ridges with the wildflower yarn. I thought maybe that would look cute. Um, but let me put this on. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, How does it look over my other outfit? You like it? But see how it's really, really, really long. Like that's my butt right there. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it's like, it's like really fun. It's really big, but it, I think once the sleeves are done, it's not gonna look as bulky. I don't know. And I'm going to like, when I'm going to block this, I usually don't block knit collage and I'm gonna block it like wide because it makes the sleeves go down a little bit more. So we'll see that next week. I'm gonna try to get this done this week because it's just kind of languishing. I don't like languishing whips. Um, 
You know, we all start stuff. Are you distracted by me taking this thing off? Or maybe I'll just wear it as a cowl. <laughs> okay. Hmm. It's very, very large. Uh, on another note, they do sell this really fat chenille yarn at Joanne Fabrics, and it's actually fucking fantastic for holding your um, knit collage stitches for your sleeves. So next time you're in Joanne, grab one of those craptastic balls of chenille. Um, I'm usually not such a yarn snob that I would say that something is crappy. It's just like, if you're making a baby blanket, it's great. Um, Franny likes to cut it into a million pieces and then I find it in my attic like someone was I don't know, ripping it apart with their teeth. She's just wacko. But she did learn how to use a scissor doing that, so bonus. Um, but it's fat. And I just use it and I tie it off. And it's great. Um, so that's my tunic. My Casey tunic. <laughs> it's huge. But um, I do really like it. And I love um, that I knit it on a 19. It said to knit it on a 17. But I guess I knit tight with the knit collage and I don't do that with other yarns. So I don't know why. Um, I know that I was watching one of the tutorials once and Amy said that she knits very loose. So I think sometimes when you see what they've made, um, here you can see, I think it really, the knitting is beautiful. It doesn't look tight. And do you see here how you can see where it's thin and then thick and then thin? I couldn't see that in some of my knit collage pieces. And I was like, why does it look so tight? You know, so, cause I'm, I'm using the needle size and I'm usually right on with needles. Um, but I guess they knit looser than I do. So I just went up to a 19 and it's, it's made all the difference. Um, the pieces are less tight, they're less dense. They're um, much more pleasurable to wear. Um, they drape better. So yeah, I would say, even though it's like a really bulky yarn and you would think maybe that you don't have to take gauge, do it. Take the time to do it. It's an expensive yarn, so you are investing to begin with. You are going to want to get the piece that you signed up for. You know, you want a piece that you want to wear. Um, I don't know why I didn't take my own advice on that when I started this next piece that I showed you last time how I was making the blue cardigan. The blue is gorgeous. Isn't it like a gorgeous blue? Um, I actually knit this whole cardigan I did all the color work, everything, and I just didn't love it. And so I pulled out all the color work and I was like, hmm, what am I going to do? Should I just knit it as a cardigan, like a blue cardigan, and I'll put some color work at the bottom? And um, I think that is what I'm going to do. And, I um, it was holding together the, um, here, it was the pink. It was the light pink, which I love. This I love. This I'm going to make a whole sweater out of this next because I just love it. Um, it was holding together this and the hot pink and this for the color work. And, you know, there were smatterings of blue into it. And I really just didn't like this. So I may just try modifying it with something else. You know, I have like all these other knit collage things that I could try. So, but I think that what I did with this, which I don't know if I should just keep going or if I should, I should frog it, is I used the 17 needle on these, which I think might be good because it's a cardigan that's kind of heavier. So maybe doing it in a more dense stitch is good for it um, so that it won't like stretch at the top here because it is longer, but I don't know. Um, it doesn't look bad at all. And I'm, I'm not unhappy with it. It's just not as pretty as doing it a little looser. So, um, no, but it still looks pretty. It does, it does. So I think I'm just gonna keep going with this until it's a length that I like. I'm just gonna put like, you know, a two by two rib at the bottom. Um, maybe I'll do some of the color. I like one of the color work motifs. I didn't like the middle. And then it went back to the one I liked. So I may just do a one row of the one I liked. I think that it would be a really great thing to have a nice cozy knit collage cardigan um, to snuggle up with next year, I guess, because now it's getting all warm out. But so that's that. I think it's called the Cozy Thoughts Cardigan. And I do love knitting with knit collage. I really do. It's just beautiful. Um, but I 
I like knitting with different weights on my needles at the same time. So I tend to have different projects of different weights. I'll have like a bulky, maybe a DK, and then a fingering, and I will go um, back to them. So I'm not like a monogamous knitter, but I don't have like a thousand things on my needles. Um, I'm looking over here. I don't really, no, I don't really have things. I mean, I would like to go back to some stuff that I frogged. Um, you guys, do you remember this? This was my Millie sweater. Do you guys remember? I was almost done, but I knit the, oh, I love nice and knit. Look at this. Such a good color. Scrubby pines. I love it. I remember I bought two and they gave me the third one. They're just the nicest women. Um, Kate and Kara. I love them. And they have, I don't know if it's um, Kara or Kate. What? They're building a new house. You got to follow them online. Anyway. I, I frogged it and it still looks really good. And so um, I'm gonna cast on my Millie. I had I had started the neck, I was supposed to do it in a five and then you're supposed to go to a seven. It's a very, very drapey fingering weight on a seven kind of sweater. And I want the sweater, it's adorable. It's like a light spring sweater. Um, it's also a good thing to learn on. The Millie sweater is a very, very simple raglan knit. Um, but I had knit the whole thing in a five. I forgot to change to a seven. And I, I got down to the bottom and I was like, oh shit. It just was not the right size. I probably could have, I could have let it go, but I love, when you love the yarn and it's not really, I got this at a trunk show, so it's not really a yarn that you can get again. Um, sometimes you just gotta pull it out. I pulled out a whole damn sweater. Yeah actually proud of myself because I'm not like that. Usually I just sit with the mistake and then I'm, I'm like, why don't I like the things I knit? Well, maybe that's why. <laughs> Everything's falling. All right. So, um, next whip. Um, I mean, these are all things you've seen before. So there are a couple things I went back to. And sometimes I go back through my knitting bags and I go back to something I've abandoned because if you casted that on, you want the object. So um, let's talk about my Portage cardigan right now. And I know, guys, we've been talking about this damn fucking cardigan for like two years. I want to finish this bitch. So um, uh, if you don't, if you have not been following along, it's the Portage cardigan by a woman whose name I cannot say. So there it is. Um, Skashwary. I don't know. I'm sorry if I said that incorrectly. I actually do go looking sometimes to figure out how to say something, but if someone has never said their name on social media, like they've never said it, I can't find it. I have to read it and I don't know how to read it. So um, anyway, the Portage cardigan, it's wonderful and it has those pockets there that I love and everything. So I am knitting this in um, Lambstrings yarn, Shanna, love her. Um, and it's buried alive is the colorway and I still absolutely love it. It's got these beautiful like rust and green specks. It's kind of like a, a bark brown, you know, it's got like taupe and, and brown and I love it. Um, so I really want the sweater. I want the damn sweater. So I, you know, I'm, I'm not the type of person who knits for the final object. Usually I'm the person who likes the process more than I usually like what I get out of it, which is why I didn't, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but I knit all the whole top with one skein and then I started with another skein. You can totally see the color change. Um, again, I don't give a shit. So to me, these are the things that show that it was handmade. Um, but I did finally finish the bottom, which is a five inches of one by one rib. And I trained myself to do it continental. So go me. Um, <laughs> and when it came time to bind off, it said to use a tubul tubular bind off. And I think we spoke about this. I keep saying last week, but I mean last podcast. Obviously it was not last week. I do not podcast weekly. I wish I did. Um, but it said to cut the yarn for a tubular bind off. I looked for all other bind offs and I didn't like any of the way they looked. And I was like, you know what? If you're going to do this, because I know I'm going to make another one of these, use this one to train yourself to do new things. Um, and so I was like, okay, let's go with the tubular bind off. It looks like it's going to blow my fucking mind, but I'm going to do it. So 
I cut my yarn to the length it said. It said four lengths of whatever you're binding off. So four of these lengths. So I did that. I actually cut seven just in case because, you know, I was about to fuck myself. Um, and then I, I started, I watched the tutorial and it said you have to do two setup rows. And the setup rows are like knit the knits and slip the pearls. And I was like, shit, I cut the yarn. I like, I fucking cut the yarn. Like why? I have enough. I had enough on this. Why did I cut it? I had enough to do it. But I fucking cut it! <laughs> I'm so fucking mad at myself. Like, have I said fuck enough times? Like, I'm so mad at myself. Anyway, since the sides of this cardigan turn into the sleeves and they into the pockets and get bent up and this and that, I don't think you're gonna really be able to see it if I add. I'm I'm going to add the yarn back onto this long strand. I'm not gonna wait till it ends. I'm gonna add it on now before I start the bind off. I don't want to do it in the middle. I have two lengths of it left. I don't think I can do the tubular bind off in two lengths. Do you think I can? It's two lengths of it. I don't want a new yarn in the middle, so I don't know what to do. So I'm like, maybe I should take out, maybe I should take out these prep rows and put the new yarn there and then do the prep rows. I don't know. So I got mad at my knitting because that's what you do. And I put it away and it's not, this is not really something that I can do without full attention anyway. So um, this is going back into hibernation. <laughs> um, I actually, while I'm trying to figure out the bottom, I think I'm going to knit the sleeves. I'm going to knit the sleeves because it's something that I can do and I can keep going. So I'm gonna knit the sleeves um, and then I will go back to figure out the bind off and pick up all the stitches for the, you know, collar. I just, I'm mad at my knitting. I'm mad at myself. I'm taking it out of my knitting. So that lives here in my wonderful, we rise by lifting others bag. And, um, you know, we rise by lifting others. Sometimes some of that has to go to lifting yourself. And so I need to lift myself and tell myself I'm a good enough knitter to do this. Like I can do it. And if it doesn't come out well, it doesn't come out well. I will take out what I did wrong and I will try something else. And that, you know, that's just the way it is. I think I get a little crazy because I don't have a lot of time to sit alone and do knitting that I really need to think about. Um, so I have projects, you know, downstairs, the, the, the Afghan that I'm doing for Franny, my Franny stripe blanket. Um, I have that downstairs and I have one other that I'm going to show you that I've been working on, which was a languishing whip that I picked up again. Um, cause it's more of a spring knit and I thought spring is coming. Let's lighten the yarn. Let's do something new, but I need to give myself the confidence to do this. And and the time. I really do need the time. And I, I sometimes I think it's unfair because Andy works all week. He is wonderful for providing for this family. He never complains about it. He likes his job. But, you know, on the weekends, he wants his weekends. And that is fair. And he doesn't really have a hobby other than buying every single apparatus ever made to make coffee because that is his new thing. Um, and he's taken over. I thought my kitchen had so much counter space and now I'm just like walking around with bowls trying to figure out where to put stuff down when I'm making dinner because we've got an espresso machine. We've got this thing that makes coffee. We've got a French press. We've got an electric kettle. We've got a grinder. We have another grinder which grinds it finer. We have two pots full of grounds. We have pots full of grounds that have been used. We have, it's fucking insane. Um, but he's happy and he never complains when I buy yarn and he is just wonderfully supportive about everything I've ever wanted to do or buy or places I've wanted to go. So am I going to tell him that he can't own every apparatus ever made that makes coffee? No, I'm not going to do it. So, um, yeah, I did tell him that this week, but okay. So I did, but I was mad. <laughs> 
anyway, he's just such a nice person. You just want him to be happy. And so, you know, that's that. But, um, yeah, he never complains about my yarn. He doesn't. He makes fun of me. He tells me I'm crazy, which is on a pazza. So, <laughs> um, and now we're both learning Italian with Duolingo. And he is on my tail with XP points. He's like on my tail. It's like playing a video game with him like every night. Franny sits with her. They have a Duolingo that's um, for kids learning how to read. That's free. So she does that. I don't know what Sammy's doing. Maybe she's picking her nose or something. Um, <laughs> and Andy and I are sitting there doing our Italian, talking at our phones, like, you know, like, the men eat bananas. <laughs> um, and <laughs> so it's funny. So we're trying to do that. But um, I don't know what I was talking about. Let's go into a whip. Okay. Okay. So I've been, I had picked up and started the carnival shawl last year. And um, I really liked it because of four colors of fingering weight. And I, you know, it's like when you have those single skeins, it's great. And so it, it, it's, I don't know how to show it to you. Let's see, like, all right, I'll show you this picture is like a diagram in it. It's basically four, you knit these four parallelograms with different types of designs in them. And then you, um, three needle stitch them together. And it's called, it didn't print well. That's why I can't show you a real picture. It's called the carnival shawl. Um, I love it. The picture showed it with like, um, you know, purples and oranges. And whenever we see purple and orange, what do you think of Gigi and Shelby? Even Franny does like she is holding an orange pen and a purple pen the other day. And she said, look, mom, my pens are Gigi and Shelby's favorite colors. So, um, yeah, I swear my kid is quietly showing how upset she is that she doesn't get to see the people she loves but that's another story for another day um anyway I think I've showed this to you if you're someone who's been watching my podcast for a while you might have seen it before so I did decide to do it in the colors that they showed and I'm reaching for something right now okay so for me with knitting um keeping things interesting keeps me going with a project so each one of these parallelograms is four sections. It's like a solid section. There's a little bit of eyelet. There's a little bit more eyelet. There's a lot of eyelet. And so, you know, it's like 20 rows of this, 40 rows of this, blah, blah, blah. So I did the first two sections and then went to a different color yarn. So I'm trying to catch up and get them all to the same spot. And then I'll do section three on all of them and then section four on all of them. If I keep changing the yarns, it makes it exciting for me and it keeps me going. Same as well, how I like to do my sleeves, a little bit on this one, a little bit on this one, a little bit here, here, and then they're both done at the same time. You know, there's no feeling like you finished something and now you have to start over. So I like to kind of drive everything towards the finish line at the same time. Um, so these are the colors that I chose. Um, the first color is, I believe this is called Spell. It's from Hedgehog Fibers. Let's show it to you here. Um, it's like a purple with a lot of magenta in it. What I like about using Hedgehog Fibers is um, they still manufacture, I believe, all of their original colorways. Whereas a lot of, um, you know, companies, they grow and change and this and that. But like with Hedgehog Fibers, you can find a sense of um, grounding. If they're very grounded. You can get colors you fell in love with years ago. And so I do like that. Um, this is La Bienemy Peanut Butter and Jelly. It's one of their staples. You know, it's very, very popular, I believe. I think she's still dying, and I, I don't know enough. But um, magenta again, you know, with like light purples. And this has a little bit of orange in it. So that brings me over to um, this, which is Black Elephant Bridges Burning. Beautiful, beautiful orange. I love this one. I really love black elephant yarns. I met Petra in um, Edinburgh and remember last year she sent me four skeins of this and they're darker, they're beautiful. So I can make a fingering weight sweater out of that and I'm planning something. Um, and then I could not figure out the final color and in the picture it was like a whitish color that had a speckle of all the other colors in it. So I found this, I think this is Machete Shop. I don't know the color way. I did buy, oh, I left it in the basement. I bought some Machete Shop in their colorway Sangria, 
which I believe is a little bit like this. So I do not remember exactly which colorway this is. My apologies. I can look back into um, podcasts. I should have put the thing in the center, but I didn't. Um, but it's beautiful. It's got light pinks. It's got some rusts in it and um, some darker specks, even some green. And it knits up really pretty. And so I really like them all together. Um, I am going to make such a mess right now. So I like them together. And that's basically going to be the shawl. It's going to be these, these four colors. Can we see it? can't see this one. So it's kind of like that and it's going to go together. I think I might switch those. I don't know. I don't know, but that's it. And I'm, so I'm making the parallelograms. Oh my God. Did I just get myself into such a mess right now? Do you guys remember that movie entrapment? <laughs> okay. This one go this way. Wait, this, this, okay. All right, there we go. Yes. Okay. Anyway, I'm finishing section two on this one and um, then I'll start section three on those. So it's like, it's just a really nice, simple, simple knit. It's virtually mindless. Um, you do have to follow along. And of course I have my charts where I, you know, and then my green pen disappears because my kids love my stuff. Um, but I, I'm really excited for that because then you, you bind them together and then you put fringe on the bottom and it's this big ethereal fun shawl for like the summer if it's cooler at night. And I think that I'm really trying to build a wardrobe of things that are like all different weights and all different purposes so that I have what I need when I want it. So I can always wear a piece of something I made when I'm out. Um, I don't have many stash acquisitions this week. I did forget a lot of them in the basement, so I will show you next time. I did want to talk about this shawl that I want to start. I just bought a bunch of stuff in the Olan update, you know, Olan from Ireland. Um, she did start a mill. I believe her name is Jess. She did start a mill, but she is still dying. Unfortunately, she's not dying a lot of her original colorways, which I'm going to actually maybe write her about because Merlin, Chimera, there are some, I mean, she made some gorgeous, gorgeous colorways and I bought them in a base that I didn't really love. So I sold them and I wanted to buy them again on singles and she doesn't seem to be making them. So that's upsetting. But the stuff that she is making is fantastic. So I do hope that you'll follow along with her. Um, I did see um, this shawl by Amanda Kafka. I've never knit something of hers yet before. I really know nothing about her. Um, she calls herself the Cat Crafty Jackalope. And uh, this is called the Boho Beats Shawl. And I saw it and I really, really liked it for all of the, the different textures in it. And it's got fringe. And um, I, I love knitting things in DK. I love shawls in DK. Like even in the summer, a nice DK weight shawl you can wear into a restaurant so that it's not heavy when you want to carry it with you, but you're in a restaurant or a movie theater and it's cold. It's almost like having like a blanket with you. Um, but what I really, really liked about it was that it has all of these like bubbles and then you bind off. I can't do this backwards. Bind off around this V here. And then you are going to pick up this V here and you're going to put like a fringe on it, I think. And then you go into this other section, which is just plain and you can stripe it. You can do whatever the hell you want. And then you go into something else on the bottom. And I liked that the sections were very different. I liked that it started out with the, the, the thing that's going to make you like lose your mind. So you can finish it and keep going like that many baubles. Yeah, but they're mini baubles. And I don't even know if you have to turn your work really for it. You might be able to just nip, nip the stitches back. Um, but I, I just really liked it. I, I got this, um, what is it called? I got like a tweed yarn for it in three different colors so that it could be have like a hot pink, like a brown, like a bark kind of a brown. And then this middle color that's very like white and like light pink, um, but with the nups in it. And I thought that would make it look really, really cozy. So again, that is Amanda Kafka and the Crafty Jackalope. And it's called the um the boho beats shawl 
and I don't know, I just like, I, I urge you to go look at it online. I think it's like a really, really pretty, you know, very bohemian shawl and that's, that seems to be my style. And so I thought I'd share it with you. Um, and that is it. I have two stash acquisitions that I'm going to show you. Um, first, no, I don't have them with me. Anyway, um, I really, really love the little hoagie bag that I bought. And I tend to take it around the house with me. Rainy's like screaming downstairs, but like, Woo! okay. Anyway, can you hear that? <laughs> She's losing her shit, that kid. Um, we've been inside too long. Anyway, I really loved it. Um, they're expensive, but they are really, really freaking well made. And they're, I mean, I haven't felt suede like this since the boots that I bought like years ago, which I grew out of when I had babies and I love them and they're still under my bed. Anyway, again, well, that's another story for another day. Um, so any, I, so I love it. I love that it has the holes in the front where you can put your pins without ruining it. So I said to my mommy, mommy, I want the bigger one. And she said to me, well, I gotta buy you something for your birthday. So um, what's really funny is I buy stuff and then she sends the money to pay for it to my husband so that he can pay the credit card. <laughs> so that's funny. Um, thank you, mommy. I, I bought the big one. Hello. <laughs> it's empty, so it looks huge, right? But um, I mean, oh my God, it's so soft. I love it. And I, I really, I'll be honest, I wasn't like, everyone was like, you know, losing their shit over the hoagie bags and they're beautiful, but my project bags, I'm perfectly happy with, you know, knitting them out of, you know, uh, uh, buying them out of like quilters cotton. I like all the prints and I, you know, I really like pink hazel and I really like, you know, like a lot of these other woodsy and wild, like a lot of other things. I would also buy these, um, feed bags. I don't know if I've ever told you about this. Um, feed.com. Yeah, I think I told you. Feed bag. So like when you buy like a big bag like this or a bag that says feed, um, it sends a certain amount of meals to people in need. And so I thought that was great. And I, this bag is huge. So I would put things in it like when I'm doing knit collage because that doesn't fit in like standard project bags. So I buy like big bags like that, big canvas bags. Um, and I like to support the feed project. So <sighs> also, <laughs> um, Ikea now makes like a little like shopping bag. See, instead of those, like those big crazy ones, it's just, you know, they're great for laundry. They're just, they're really great for everything. So last time I ordered Ikea, I bought a bunch of those and I use those to carry around a lot of stuff around the house because I can pinch it shut and if the cat pukes on it, yeah, wipe it off. <laughs> yeah, oh, love that. Um, so, but I have my beautiful hoagie bag now. So thank you, mommy, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so boho, I love it. Um, I'm, you know, I'm nuts. I'm one of those people that when they get things, they like measure the seams, like all oh, these seams are equal, are the armpits even. I'm like, I'm very, very nuts about that stuff. And, and these bags are very even, they're beautiful. So thank you, mommy, I love it. Um, I also love, um, shit. Barnyard Knits. I think I've talked to you about Barnyard Knits. Um, my friend and I always laugh because Barnyard Knits has so many colorways. So many. And they're beautiful, but she names them perfectly. Like when you see something and it says like winter sunset, like it looks like a damn winter sunset. Like she names the stuff so well. So one of my friends, my very best friend, um, I taught her how to knit. She lives in LA and I, I taught her how to knit basically over FaceTime. She also went to a couple lessons, um, out in Santa Monica. Um, and so if she has a problem, she calls me and I try to fix it for her on FaceTime, which is not easy, but we've been, we've been trucking through it. Um, she loves barnyard knits. I'm trying to get her into all the paraphernalia that comes with being a knitter, you know? And, um, 
my mom loves barnyard knits too. So I was looking at the website and my mom said to me, you know, that colorway dipped in chocolate, which we both like drool over. I love it. Um, was her $20 skein of the month in February. So every month she does a certain colorway that is $20 instead of like 26 or 28. And so you can maybe easier, it's easier to afford a sweater quantity or whatever you want. So I always check in and it was dipped in chocolate and I love this. So I bought three skeins of it. I don't know what I'm gonna use it in. Um, it's beautiful. It's like pinks and browns and whites and it's just gorgeous. And so I bought three skeins of that. So I do urge you guys to go over to Barnyard Knits, check out whatever their skein of the month is. It's, it's not, it's not dyed any like, you know, faster or worse. It looks beautiful. The quality is there. She just gives you a $20 skein every month. And I, I think that her yarn dyeing is very, very high end. And I think you'll love it. So I wanted to share that with you. And as I look around, I think that's it. And I think that is it. I did buy some machete shop. I should be getting my um, magpie from this magpie society that should be coming soon. And um, I guess that's it. So I, you know, usually spend a little time in my podcast talking about politics. I don't really know how anymore. I, I watch TV. I watch, you know, the CNN news cycle most of the day. Um, and I realize that it's driving me a little batty, but oh my God, the things that are happening in this country right now, the things that are happening around the world, they, it, things do not have to be this bad. They just don't. And that's where my aggravation really sets in. Um, yesterday we passed the COVID relief bill and, you know, it was 50 Democrats voted for it, 49 Republicans voted against it. One Republican was absent. Um, so it was like a 50 to 49 vote. Like people are standing in food lines in this country. People are dying. Black and brown communities are being hit with this virus disproportionately. Like what exactly has to happen in this country for Republicans to say, all right, we'll help. Like what exactly has to happen, right? If we get rid of this virus, if we help people pull themselves up from whatever the virus did to them. The economy will bounce back naturally. So I don't understand why the Republicans are not invested in this. I mean, we see the governor of Texas pulling the mask mandates. We see things happening in, in like, you know, Florida or Alabama or the Dakotas. Like, why are you guys so okay with being almost accomplices to murder? Like people are just dying. So I don't understand it. There are people, there are Democrats in these states that are writing on these like comments, you know, under these things like, I live here and I'm so upset. Um, there are businesses saying we're still not gonna open because I can't put the people at work for me in this sort of danger. So, you know, I mean like they wanna go back to like just a hundred capacity, like this like virus is not still around. And they keep saying like, well, what are we supposed to do? Wear masks forever? That was what I heard. And I was like, no, not forever. But let's finish the pandemic first. Like, let's get everyone vaccinated. Like, the mayor of Detroit sent back the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because he said it wasn't as good as the other ones. It has a 100% like rate that no one dies when they have it. Like a hundred percent of the people that tried, like no one died. And it was being tested at a height of the pandemic, whereas Pfizer and Moderna were tested like, you know, when numbers were lower. <sighs> Just put it out there. People have to sign up for it anyway. If they wanted it, you should have left it out there so they people could have gotten it. He sent it back. Like, I just don't understand the shit that's going on. Right? And then we've got Cuomo. This whole thing's blowing my fucking mind. Though, I mean, he's an arrogant motherfucker. So, like, yeah, I get it. But if he resigns, where, like, Trump hasn't resigned for that. Clinton hadn't resigned for that. We lost Al Franken. Like, it was, like, I don't agree in, of, uh, with sexual harassment. I don't agree with all of this stuff. Like, if they resign, then someone could take their seat who's going to hurt a whole population of people. I'm just so, like, my mind is spinning about it all. And like, you know, I have a white male 
gynecologist and he tells me to turn off the TV. He's like, it's not good for your anxiety. And I'm like, I need to know what's going on in order to protect my family. And if that means that I lose my mind because of the anxiety or I can't sleep at night, like that's what comes with the job. I'm a mom. I'm a mom before anything. I have to make the decisions for my kids and for my family that are correct. So I have to know what's going on. So, I mean, it's just like, I'm just... Anyway, <sighs> I'm sure I could go on and on about that topic, but I just don't want to. So I hope that you all are doing well. I really do. I keep hearing of people, you know, losing people. Um, and it's just such a sad time. It really is. But please stay vigilant. We're all tired. I would love to leave my house. I just want to go get a, a meal that I haven't cooked. I want to go get a slice of pizza at... There's a place called Linwood Pizza. The pi I used to just slip out on a weekend and go and get two huge slices of pizza with pepperoni and cover them in garlic powder and sit in the corner in this goddamn pizzeria and eat it without any manners. <laughs> like, I was just... Arr! And that was my garlic fix for the week because my husband is allergic. And so I haven't had garlic in, like, a fucking year. And I'm, like, losing my mind. And I've been eating pickles, like, straight out of the jar. I get the ones, like, the cornichons that have onions in them. Like, I'm just... You know, we're in survival mode, everyone. Do what you have to to survive. And, um... Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I wish I had more to say. I really love all of you that left comments on my last podcast. I love reading them. And I really appreciate you all participating in the conversations. So um, thank you. And um, I hope I responded to most of you. There was someone who said she wanted the Aurora Borealis. Um, I have it here. So it's the Magpie Fibers Aurora Borealis. I wrote you and told you that you should DM me on Instagram if you wanted it. And I don't think you did. So please do that. Uh, and then I actually think I'm going to be having a D stash soon. Um, it's going to be flat rate for shipping just because I have to print the labels out here instead of taking them to the post office to be weighed. But um, if you're okay with that, then um, we should be good. So um, I really love you all. I do. I hope you all are well. Um, you know, share recipes with me, share memes, share whatever you'd like. Um, follow me on Instagram if you don't follow me on Instagram. Um, and just be well. Be happy. Do whatever puts a smile on your kids' faces. You know? So, uh, survival mode. All right. I wish you all happiness and, and health. And I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.